Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all. In the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is so good. And He is always worthy to be praised, no matter whether it's a Sunday or Monday. He is always worthy to be praised. Because He cares for you, He loves you the way you are. And His love is everlasting. time what we are going to spend in the presence of the lord let this uh, time benefit you spiritually even materially let's all close our eyes we seek the presence of the lord as the deer pants for the water so my soul longs after him scripture says like that if we take delight in the lord you will find him Let us all close our eyes and seek the Lord. So we shall find Him wherever we are. We will find Him. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Abba Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful moment. We just want to surrender ourselves and welcome Your presence wherever we are. We just want to let ourselves down. We want your presence to be manifested wherever we are gathered in your name, Lord. As you promised that when we gather in your name, you will be there in the midst, Lord. Come in our midst. Come in our midst, Jesus, Lord. Help us to find you. Help us to feel your presence, Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill us once again, Lord. Strengthen us once again. Cover us and lead us to Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. for your amazing grace and everlasting love upon us Jesus Lord cleanse our hearts prepare our hearts Lord to worship you let our worship be acceptable and pleasant before you Lord because you are our king of kings and lord of lords we worship you we praise you we give you thanks Lord, for who you are Lord Jesus you some in rest of the moments into your mighty hands Lord Lord you minister to us you speak to us thank you lord jesus in jesus name amen amen praise the lord hallelujah once again i greet you all in the matchless name of our lord jesus christ always uh, it's good to be in the presence of the lord there is joy in the house of the lord hallelujah how many of you can accept it can you hear a amen yes it's always uh, there is joy in the house of the lord is the When, when God gives everything that is an everlasting thing. Hallelujah. It will be forever and ever. When God bless you, His blessing will be forever and ever. When God promised David His kingdom, His kingdom for generation to generation, it is going to remain forever. Hallelujah. Oh, He is a promise keeper and He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Psalms 147 says, Praise the Lord, it is good and pleasant and it is appropriate we are going to do the same thing because it is appropriate for you and me to praise the lord hallelujah come join with us sundays when we gather together it is a time of celebration let us celebrate the god's grace in our life hallelujah put your hands together worship him
put your hands together. Give God a big hand of applause. Hallelujah. For he deserves all the glory. All the praises. Give him thanks. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, it is blessed. It is appropriate. It is acceptable. It is a wise thing to do. Yes, Lord. Oh, if you believe, you praise you. If you believe, you praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the lifter of your head. Amen. Oh, Shandura. When things come against you, when people come against you, oh, Jesus. God will lift your head up. He will lift your head up. Those who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. People try to put the shame on you. People always try to accuse you. Bring the shame in your life. But when you trust, when you put all your trust in the Lord, you'll never be. You'll never be ashamed. Oh, lift your head high. Oh, among the nations, among the people, among your neighbors, among your family, among your friends, oh, among your fellow workers, God will lift your head high.
Open up my eyes to the things I see. Show me how to love like you. love like you. How many of you can pray like this? Whatever breaks his heart, that, that breaks your heart too. Lord, heal us. Lord, make our hearts and minds clean. Help us to love like you, Jesus. As we sang this song and worship you, Lord, let it be our lifestyle too. Let it be our lifestyle too, Lord. Help us to worship you in our everyday life by living like you, like testifying your miracles in our life. Let your name be glorified, Lord. Let your name be glorified, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
there is power in his name there is deliverance in his name hallelujah sing it out loud g your name, Lord. blessing that you have in store for us, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, hallelujah, because you are a miracle-working God. Your works are miraculous. Your ways are wondrous. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Oh, just we want to summon the rest of the time into your mighty hands. The Spirit of God minister to us, speak to us. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once again, thank you uh, for all your support and the prayer. We are receiving so many prayer points and uh, testimonies. The ministries, the children's ministry, and the television ministry. I thank God for all the uh, testimonies and uh, miracles that God is doing in people's lives. Uh, Continue to write to us whatever you received, any miracles, any testimonies, please uh, don't forget to write to us. Uh, you can contact us in the email newlifechurchdublin at gmail.com and you can also follow us on our Facebook. New Life Church Dublin is our Facebook page. You can like us on the Facebook page and you can subscribe to our new YouTube channel, New Life Church Dublin. And you can also send your prayer request and we are ready to pray for you. And there's a few quick announcements. We have our Bible studies every Friday of 7. We have our Bible studies. And the Bible study is happening on the Zoom. You can join with us. Those who want to join, please, uh, if you don't have the Zoom ID, you can write to us. We can send you the Zoom link so that you can join in the Bible study. And uh, we have our uh, Sunday services, uh, uh, language Tamil services at quarter to 9, 8.45, quarter to 9, we have our Tamil service. And we have our English service at half one. Please, uh, please do join wherever you are. And uh, <coughs> keep praying. Be fervent in the prayer. Hallelujah. Be firm in your faith and also be fervent in your prayers. God is good and he will do miracles in your life. Whatever you're expecting, 
uh, God, it will be an essence, amen from the Lord, the days to come, let there be testimonies in your life, and you will witness the God's amazing things in your life. And now is the time to listen to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is always sharp, hallelujah. It is powerful, and uh, God always wants to speak to his people. Hallelujah. We are serving a living God. He wants to speak to you and me. So let us listen uh, from the word of the God. Let our mind be alert and hearts be receptive. And uh, now Sister Pauline will share the word of the Lord. Let everyone be take heed to the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a joy to bring the word of the Lord. And, uh, and again, I'm excited to uh, connect with you all once again through this service. And we want to welcome you all for this service once again. And God is good and he's been good to us all the time. And that is the speciality of uh, God, that he's good all the time. No matter what our circumstances are, he doesn't change according to our circumstances, but rather he's a God who is always good to us. And he is good to us forever. Hallelujah. Even in the times of despair, times of uh, disappointment, times of hopelessness, God is always is good to us hallelujah and I uh, I personally say that because I have tasted the Lord and I'm sure every one of you or who you who haven't tasted the Lord I pray that every one of you will taste and see that the Lord is good hallelujah and that is the greatest joy and today um, I'm going to bring the word so this month the Lord has given us a promise for our church where he says that I will make you firm until the ends of the earth I will make you firm I will stabilize you I will I will make you firm hallelujah so let's read this word from uh, the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse from 24 so this word is from uh, the book of Matthew uh, chapter 7 verse from 24 therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock and the rain descendeth, and floods come, and the winds blow and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and do not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell at uh, and great was its fall. Hallelujah. So this is um, a teaching of Jesus where he explains about a house that is built um, on the rock and uh, what happens when the wind blows and floods rise against, uh, against the house and what happens to the house. So um, I want to tell you a little story about um, a developer. So he's a building developer. He called two people and he said, look, I'm I'm going to give you a mission. I'm going to give you a project. I want you all. I want. I want both of you to build a house. Uh, each will build each house, and I will provide all that you need. Whatever you need for building the house, I will provide all the materials. I will invest uh, on the house, and uh, you can uh, give me the plan for uh, both the houses. And he estimated a big, huge amount on them, and then they brought the plan. So when they brought the plan to the builder both the houses were looking he said the both both house should look the same so both the builder both the both the constructing people they came and they showed him uh, showed the developer a plan and uh, he said come on go ahead and start building the house and they and he has granted a big amount for uh, them to build the house so both of them started building the house and one man he said look he's given me such a big amount okay why don't 
I use all the all the money and build a nice big house because he's given me uh, given me everything. I'm not doing everything. He's given me everything. So why don't I do a good massive and a strong house? And the other man, he said, look, why should we waste so much on the money? You know, though there is so much uh, um, material that I can get uh, cheap and, uh, you know, he was cutting the corners and uh, he built a similar house and uh, he saved a lot of money and the house looked almost the same and uh, so he said he, he it was a day that uh, both the builders had to come to this developer and he said look uh, we have built the house and you can come and see the house so this developer he came and saw both the houses they were very beautiful um, uh, and uh, they, they looked almost similar and uh, he said look uh, this house, he said to the first guy and the second guy, this house is for you. So whatever, whichever house you built, that house belongs for you. And whatever the rest of the money that you have saved comes back to me. And then this man who developed the house, who built the house with all that money he could, all the resources that he could, he was so happy that he said, oh, I've built a good and a standard solid house that it belongs to me now. But rather the other man who thought that he would uh, use cheap materials because it's just the house that he's building for, he thought he was building for somebody else. And therefore he said, oh, I'm saving a lot of money and, uh, you know, I use the cheap material. But if I had known that uh, it was a house that I it was for me I would have used all the money and I would you I would have built the house much more nicer because it is for me and he was very sad when he heard that the house belongs to him and the, when the house was given to him and that is that is the uh, that is the sad ending of the man who thought that he is saving a lot but the developer he know what he did he gave the same amount of opportunity same same amount of investment, same uh, same freedom was given for both of them. But look what they did. If they had known, if the second guy, if he had just known that he, he is building a house for himself, imagine it would be a better house. It would have been a better house even, even he would have gone beyond or at least to the amount, full extent of amount that was uh, invested, he would have used. You know, that's the sad story of it. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, Three, nine, you are God's building. Hallelujah. The life that you build is your possession. That is your, that is your house. You know, the life that we live on this earth, the house, the, the life that we are leading in this, uh, on this earth is the house that each one of you are building. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, uh, the Bible says that you are the temple of the Lord and you are not of your own and you are not yet done. You know, the Lord says you are not yet had done. Your God is still in the process of building you. Probably somebody is thinking, you know, my life is already done. There's no hope for me. I uh, There is not much uh, uh, ahead of me in my, in my future. But the Lord is telling you, you are the building. You are the temple of the God and you are not yet done. I am still working on you. God is in the process of building your lives, your house on this land. Hallelujah on this earth. And you know what the beauty is? that a lot of times uh, 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 another thing I want to show you is uh, before God will uh, show about what happens to the two houses the verses start like this whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them hallelujah whoever hears the words um, in this time of uh, age there is uh, knowledge everywhere everybody knows everything a lot of us most of us are like uh, walking Googles and walking Chrome Chrome you know, we, we at the tip of our fingers, we have all the information, all the facts that we need, all the facts that are out in the world. Everybody is so knowledgeable. Everybody is full of facts. Anything you see, anything you speak in a discussion, everybody comes out with a lot of uh, facts, uh, facts and uh, knowledge about almost everything. There is, even if you don't know everything at the tip of your fingers, you can get facts. You know, knowing God uh, is just a fact. A lot of time facts are nothing but just, just piece of information. And when you see Bible as a piece of information, that will not do any good to you. But once the word of God 
starts speaking to you how how does it speak to you when you hear the word of god and you want to do them that is when you start building your house you know revelation uh, uh, knowledge wisdom is just you know why is just head knowledge the word says head knowledge will only make you proud and haughty but you know wisdom on the other hand is the is the right use of knowledge when you have wisdom whatever knowledge whatever facts you have you will use it rightly hallelujah so wisdom is the right use of the facts right right use of the knowledge that you um, that you um, have and uh, wisdom is what you do now so that your future will be happy so that your future will be established if every day every day process it is an everyday process and hearing the word of god and doing it is an everyday process if you don't if you just know you know a lot of uh, a lot of people know even atheists they know about jesus you know they know what is in the bible they know about jesus but christianity salvation comes to you when you know jesus hallelujah when you know jesus knowing jesus is an entirely different thing from knowing about jesus hallelujah everybody in this world almost knows what is christianity and what is salvation and what did jesus do on this earth almost everyone knows about about these things but why is that uh, even christians uh, are not walking in a victorious life why am i still in failures why am i making decisions that is foolish you know why why is that all all these things happen is because we the the moment you start getting revelations it is is a total new wisdom hallelujah knowing jesus is a different thing and knowing about jesus is a totally different thing a lot of people you know uh, they'll say yeah i know i know jesus i know bible i know what's written in the bible and yet they live in a very fallen uh, fallen lifestyle why because there is no revelation i pray that you will pray for revelation from god a revelation is the enlightenment in ephesians Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 Paul is praying for the church. You know, Paul is praying this way. It's a beautiful three verses. I wish I pray that all of you will read these verses. 17 cha- Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. It says that that the Lord that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom Hallelujah will give you Paul is praying that Jesus the father of glory will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him hallelujah knowing Jesus knowing him personally you know all of many of us know this psalms 23 where it says ye though i walk through the valley of shadow of death but how many of you know the real experience when there is a word when there is facts there is no relationship they are just dry facts knowing about jesus is knowing him as a matter of facts but knowing jesus is an experience when you experience jesus when you experience the valley of shadow of death you experience jesus hallelujah because jesus will definitely reveal himself in the valley of shadow of death and you will experience his love hallelujah when you when there is a revelation there is a relationship when there is a relationship you get an experience you know for example i can tell you pregnancy all of us know about what pregnancy is oh yeah it is difficult what happens in each semester what happens to the woman as she goes through the process of of deliver uh, pregnancy and then she delivers a child it this is knowledge but for a woman who has experienced pregnancy it is a total new experience it is a total new experience but for people who don't know that it will be just a matter of fact for example you might have you might have known a lot of facts about jesus but until and otherwise you hear and do it it will just stay as a fact it won't become as an experience in your life salvation 
comes by experience salvation comes by hearing and doing when you hear and do you experience salvation nobody can experience nobody can put uh, salvation in words salvation is an experience salvation is a relationship that is established with your father god hallelujah that's why we see a lot of people even though they are christians they are born in christian families they know bible they know uh, all the facts that are in bible yet they uh, backslide yet they fall away from the faith because they only know bible as a book of facts that is no good that is no good at all bible is not any other book bible is a living word of god and when you read bible as a word of god from your father the words become alive the words are alive they speak to you hallelujah don't read bible as any other book that you read bible is not a book of facts but bible is jesus living and speaking to you hallelujah only when you seek jesus you will find him and when i say god is good is just a words is just few words but when you experience how good he is in your life it's a total new experience hallelujah i pray that you will pray for revelations in your life because when revelation comes there is enlightenment it's an experience it's a relationship words and facts people can take away from you you know per these words uh, a lot of people i hear a lot of times people say oh it was a beautiful message pastor gave this week oh it was a good message and by afternoon you you cannot explain what the pastor has preached because you have just heard it as words you have just heard it as facts it just is nice to your ears but the moment you hear them and it goes right into your heart it becomes a revelation and nobody can remove nobody can take the revelation out of you hallelujah so the pray for revelation i pray that the lord will give you wisdom he will open the eyes of your heart to see this and you will establish a relationship with father hallelujah don't see jesus as a god that sits far away he is your father he is your friend bible jesus himself calls you that you are my friend hallelujah you are my son jesus calls you as son and you you do not need saints to go to jesus he calls you as a son why do you look for saints for your prayers to be answered he has already called you your son and your daughter so you go to him as you go to your father there is a relationship there is a relationship nobody can take the relationship when uh, nobody can take the fact say for example you and your father in this world and you and your mother in this world that is a relationship even if you like it or not even if you understand it or not that relationship exists forever and similarly when you have salvation that is a relationship that is established between you and your father god and nothing can take away when you see it as a relationship when you see the word of god as a book of facts is no good to you and that's why the passage starts jesus is saying that whoever hears and does these things you know he is the man who builds his uh, house on the rock so jesus is a rock how do you build your house you know what in naomi naomi had lost everything and now she, now that she decides to go back to jerusalem go back to bethlehem she calls two of her uh, daughter in laws uh, ruth and orpha and she says children now go back to your own father's house because i don't have anything and both of these daughters know about the god of naomi know about because all these years they were with her she has told them about who her god is where she had come from how her god had blessed her both of them are saying the both of them knew about the god of naomi but or for when she said both of them cried when they were when they were told by naomi to go back to their father's house and orpha went back though orpha knew about the god of naomi ruth knew god himself and that's why her ruth says wherever you go i go your god is my god hallelujah both of them were given the same kind of life experience both of them had experienced same failures both of them were given again the same opportunity to build their life again when naomi said she said to both of them ruth and uh, orpha she said to both of them now you can go back 
but you know what they were given the equal opportunity to build their lives again but see what ruth did she had decided to follow naomi because she know she knew the god of naomi and that's why her life later in you in the in the book you see that her life was built on a solid ground hallelujah and her life was built her life was established we don't hear about orpha anymore but we see the ruth she had even come in the generation of jesus and that is how she built her house on the solid rock hallelujah saul and david in bible both were chosen by god and both were anointed as kings over israel both were anointed by samuel the the circumstances are the same you know the the circumstances that happened for Saul and David is exactly the same both were uh, chosen by God both were anointed by Samuel both were made kings over Israel but when you see the life of Saul he did not build his life on the solid rock we see that he's he has lost his uh, kingship he even uh, he was even thrown away from the kingship he was his kingdom was not established but rather david who built his life on jesus the rock on god the rock established his kingdom and you know what because he established uh, because he uh, he established he built his life on the rock god established his kingdom forever in the years to come in the new new world god god has said that the kingdom of david will be established the circumstances were the same the failures were same the instructions were same the opportunities were same the investment was the same but how do you build your house how do you build your life that is what matters so what does it require to build a house on the solid rock of jesus the, uh, the word says that you need wisdom you need wisdom so when you have just facts that is not wisdom that is just a box of wisdom that is just a box of facts that's not that's only a knowledge that only a knowing that's only an awareness but wisdom is using the knowledge in the right way in the right time hallelujah and wisdom comes only from god nobody in this world can give you wisdom wisdom is the god is the source of all wisdom and understanding hallelujah so the in ephesians again you know uh, and the next word uh, 18 he says the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling when you are building your house when you are building your life on this earth the, the needs hope god revealed himself as different uh, according to the very circumstances uh, or their needs in genesis um abraham god reveals to abraham himself as el shaddai el shaddai is almighty god it in a way he's saying that abraham you see that your circumstances at the age of 99 uh, in genesis 17:1 at the age abraham is 99 years old and god reveals himself as el shaddai what does it mean el shaddai is all powerful all mighty god there is nothing that is impossible with god at the age of 99 abram is almost uh, at the verge of losing his hope because he has lost all hope you know everything that surrounding him is hopelessness there is there is nothing that he can hold off hold hold forth because god has promised him 25 years ago that i will bless you with a son and all these 25 years what was left for him what was surrounding him was hopelessness but in this circumstances in his very need god is revealing himself as el shaddai hallelujah and that is that is the speciality of god and that is the beauty of god he comes to you and he reveals himself to you in your very circumstance in the very circumstances the very problem that you're going through the very need that you have god reveals himself hallelujah and jehovah jaira you know abraham is about to sacrifice his son and that is the only son that he uh, that he has and that's the only blessing he has and that's the very blessing he has been praying and he has been waiting for a long time and now he is about to sacrifice his own son and god reveals 
himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh that I will be your provider. There's nothing that I cannot provide. The very need, you need a lamb for the sacrifice. The very need I can provide because my name is Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. God himself will, God will reveal himself in your very circumstances, the very need, the very problem, the very challenge that you're facing. God will reveal himself if you look for revelation. If you look, uh, if you hear his word and do it, when you hear his word and do it, you are building your life on the solid rock. Those who hear the word and they don't do them, they just hear them as facts. It's like Google, you're searching a lot of things. You don't, you don't, you don't build your life based on that. It's just, it's just you're hearing them, but you, uh, when you don't do them, you are building your house on the sand. When there is wind, when there is challenges in life, when there's circumstances beyond your control, these, this house will shake and it will fall, a great fall. But when you, when you build your life on Jesus, what happens is you develop a relationship. You learn to value the relationship. You learn to surrender yourself to Jesus. You learn to depend. When, they, when there is a relationship, there is dependence. You depend on the person. You depend on God. When there is a relationship established, when you know Jesus as your personal father, when you know Jesus personally, you tend to, you tend to uh, surrender yourself. You give the control to him. Lord, it is not me. I cannot control my life. I know you. Job says, I know. Job says, I know about God. But now, mine eyes have seen you and I know you. You know, in the first passage, Job says, I know about God. But now, my very eyes have seen him and I know him. Hallelujah. And that's why later in the book he says, my very eyes, I know my God, I know my Redeemer and he will raise me up on the last days. Hallelujah. It's a big difference. When you know God, there is a relationship. And when there is relationship, you give control to God. You, you uh, depend on him. You surrender your life. When you surrender your life, God is a solid rock. Where even when there's a wind blowing, even when there is uh, floods rising against, even there is storm coming against, rising against your house, rising against your life, because your life is established firmly on the solid rock of Jesus, you will not be shaken. Hallelujah. You will not be shaken. My dear friends, you will not be shaken because your life is not built on a solid is not built on a sand it's built on the solid rock of Jesus what decision you're going to make you know wisdom is about what decisions that you make the decisions that you make wisdom is not about keeping all the facts and you do a wrong thing keeping all the all the knowledge and you make a bad decision that is foolishness you have to be wise using the right knowledge. When you know that Jesus is your father, the knowledge is no good when you don't use it. Wisdom is, yes, I know God is my father. I know he is my redeemer. I know he is my help in times of trouble. I know Jesus. I know Jesus because he is the very God who can turn water to wine. He is the Jesus who has made the blind to see, who has made the dumb to speak, who has made the storms to be quiet. He is the same Jesus who has provided for thousands out of nothing. He is the same Jesus who has has raised the dead. I know my father. When I know my father, I will build. It is wise that you build your life on Jesus. It will be very foolish on the day that he comes back that you see you only, Je you only know Jesus as a matter of facts and not as a personal savior. That will be very foolish to do that. And I pray that every one of you who are hearing this word or hearing this voice will be wise to build your house on Jesus. Will be wise to know him as your personal savior. And that is how you build your house on Jesus, the solid rock. And you will not be shaken. When you depend on Jesus, the solid rock, your life will be firm. You know how tall the building is? The taller you want to go, the deeper you have to go. You know, in the, in the same, uh, same uh, um, proverb or the same teaching, Luke writes it 
a little bit different luke chapter 6 verse uh, 48 he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock when you dig deep what is digging deep and laying the foundation is knowing him deep when you know jesus superficially as any other man who walked on the earth that is not going to make you lay your foundation on the rock know him personally ask for a revelation when you read bible read that the holy spirit will speak to you hallelujah when you seek you shall find him hallelujah when you seek him you will find him and i pray that every one of you will know jesus as your personal savior if anybody who is watching has an accepted jesus as your personal savior this is the time he died for you on the cross he is there his blood is enough to wash away all your sins no blood no sin is too big for his blood to be cleaning you to sanctify you so this is the time i pray that wherever you are you will accept jesus as your personal savior because jesus is a living god jesus is a living god who can restore who can build your life once again maybe your life is all destroyed maybe you are thinking that my life is done and finished but jesus is telling you it's not over yet it's not over yet here i am if you accept me as your personal savior and if you call call upon me i will come into your heart and i will build your life i will restore your life i will make your life new and you can start again you can start a new life in jesus hallelujah jesus is the personal savior jesus is a good god who never holds your sin who never holds the wrong things that you have done in your life when he says forgiven it's forgiven forever hallelujah whatever sins people might remind you people might say the things that you have went wrong the the, the bad decisions that you have taken people might remind you but jesus the good father he has been through what you and me are going through therefore he knows the pain he knows the sickness he knows the difficulties he knows your weaknesses call jesus into your life hallelujah call jesus jesus come into my life come into my heart lord i want to accept you as my personal savior call jesus into your life jesus is there at the door he is knocking on your door if you will open your door he will come inside your heart and he will build your heart build your life once again and your life will be established on the solid ground hallelujah let's pray father thank you for this wonderful time that you have given us father we know that lord you are the solid rock and therefore from now on lord we are we are making a decision to be wise in what we do therefore father lord we going to build we commit for a relationship with you lord we surrender our lives into your hands you build our lives on you who is the solid rock so that our lives cannot be shaken hallelujah it will be firm it will be established hallelujah it will be stabilized on a solid ground we will not be shaken though wind might blow storms might hit oh father lord we will not be shaken hallelujah Because because our lives are established in Jesus the solid rock father whoever is here or master lord hearing the word father i pray for them lord establish their lives make them firm make them stand firm on you and help them and provide them reveal yourself in their very circumstances whatever they are going through oh father lord maybe the sickness lord you are jehovah rafa father you are the healer reveal yourself as the healer in their lives oh father god whoever is praying for the financial needs father you are jehovah jireh you reveal yourself as jehovah jireh the provider hallelujah in their lives of oh master lord and you are el shaddai father whoever is praying whoever is looking for you lord reveal yourself so oh father god reveal yourself father god according in the very needs in the very troubles in their very circumstances that they are going through father lord you reveal yourself and i pray that people's eyes and people's uh, hearts will be open to see you and know you as your as their personal savior as their father as a personal friend lord we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah be blessed the lord is good once again and taste and see that the lord is good hallelujah